Lloyd from No Kids Given, and uh, I've been chosen to do this video promo of my own free will. Before I start, I'd like to thank our DM, amazing DM, uh, Ben, uh, for his work in this campaign, and he is truly a shining example of what we can all achieve with enough effort. Um, our first sponsor is Arm Class, yay, yeah, yay, uh, for amazing hand-drawn character sheets, head over to armorclass.co forward slash no crits given for your 10% off your order. I'd show you mine, but it's uh, locked away inside someone's house with my passport. Um, uh, our second sponsor is Mini Megastore. For all your tabletop needs, including cool minis and source material, head to minimegastore.com uh, forward slash no crits given for 10% off. It's going well. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's just a shame that there isn't a code for a nicer DM out there. It's a, it's a joke. No, no, Ben, no, no, Ben. Hello, welcome back to No Crits Given. Welcome back to Dead Fire, a new dawn, our pirate themed adventure, our capers across the pirate isles in the continent of Bria. My name is Ben, I am your dungeon master and your guide through these lands, and joining me at the table today are the same people that usually are, but let's say hello to uh, Lloyd or Luke. Lloyd Curtis! Hi. <laughs> Jamie Doherty. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I've got a peek, haven't I? Got no, no, I meant him. He just sort of like reactivated. Oh, I thought he did. I fell down. No. And Josh. Josh Ames. <laughs> Luke Jackson. And my good friend and business partner, Mr. Joe Smith. <laughs> if for some bizarre reason you have not been keeping up or watched any of the previous episodes, first things first. Go and go and watch the rest of the episodes, guys. Why are you here at episode thirteen without watching episodes one through twelve? None of this will make sense if you don't. Do that. You have no idea who we are, let alone the characters at the table. It's like those people who read a book and just skip to the end. If I didn't the watch our did, episodes, yeah, people back, do that. You would have. I wouldn't know. You have no idea. What's going on. <laughs> I was watching you, silly goose. I was in there, no idea what happened. <laughs> but in our last episode, the guys dealt with the fallout from their battle of Port Mandalay, where they helped. Uh, governor Fairbrook retake the island, retake the port, and reinstate himself as governor. We did many a thing in the last episode, but most important, I think, of all, is Matt Trim spent a good three or four hours trying to find a pint. Oh, yeah. Spent an awful long and ended up back on his own ship, only to find out the next day that there was a room next to the kitchen full of beer the entire time. Typhus had a very, very intense one, one-to-one, -one, heart to heart with his mother, who had been imprisoned after the after the battle, and learnt some very revealing truths about maybe himself and his um, history, as well as the Obsidian Federation. Cold fell asleep in a kitchen. All right. Karen bought some armor that he'd already got. <laughs> <laughs> wow, hindsight's a wonderful. Thing. <laughs> And Captain Zozo, after being asked yet another favour by Governor Fairbrook, was taken to their vault of treasures where he was presented with a sword, a samurai's katana, decorated with a dragon on the hilt that seemed very, very at home and familiar to the man himself. We left off as he off, off, as Governor Fairbrook presented you with the sword. And we will pick up directly in that moment. And uh, pick up is the operative <laughs> word as Zozo will reach out. As he's dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it shatters. And uh, will reach out to pick up the blade. Yeah. Um, kind of quite apprehensive. It's, yeah. it's quite, quite a majestical sight that's just happened in front of him. So he's reaching out with his right hand to, to hold the Handle yeah, the sword. you take it. Uh, Fairbrook will obviously release the sword to you as he's offered it to you and say the words This sword has been in this vault for as long as I can remember. 
I remember seeing it as a child and was fascinated with this blade. I spent many, many years trying to figure out its history and its past and its meaning, but only, only last night, the night before, when I saw you, when you walked into my chambers in the home of the real world, did I realise something? That the history of this sword is not what's important, but maybe where it is heading. As you look at the sword, uh, Fairbrook will sort of nod and give you the room to sort of spend a minute alone with your sword. Um, that means two things. <laughs> <laughs> Do me a perception check. Perception. Perception. What can I see? Very stomping sword. Da 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 da. Wow. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's upside down seven. I've had it then. In total? No, it's a uh, <laughs> twelve. You pick up this sword, you're waving it around, you're sort of getting a feel for it, and as you sort of lift it back around to look at it again, sort of hold it and examine the blade, that that smoky sort of folded steel, we assume is steel, but that sort of uniquely decorated blade with the sort of the handle of the blade being in that deep sort of velvety blue colour with the sort of, I believe the term is a pommel, I'm not sure if that's the right, on a katana, but on a... It was right in the witcher, wasn't it? Um, in the shape of a dragon's head. As you look, turn and look round at that dragon's head, you see the two sort of sapphire-like gemstones that make up its eyes. And strangely, on a, on a, on a 12, how best to describe it on a 12? You're very aware that this is either a, like a, some sort of stone that's been crafted into this dragon's head. But as you look into two blue gemstones, a voice in the back of your head sort of seems to suggest that this sword might be looking back at you. Not with sentience, but there's something there that is looking at you as much as you are looking at it. Can we do anything? Um, so holding it out, staring now into these eyes. Um, now I don't have any form of ability to detect anything mm -hmm. um, but as best as I can I will just verbally communicate with the sword so you're going to say anything in particular yeah um, it's fair but goal because that one I'm bound yeah he's left you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <don't>. what's going <laughs> on <laughs> you'll never totally believe what happened <laughs> um, I am unsure as to what your purpose is and why you've ended up with me. However, I can assure, and I'm sort of holding it by the handle with the blade going down, mm -hmm. and as I say that, I'm going to flip it up, catch it back by its handle so the blade's the right way, and go, I can assure you, together we will move forward. As you say the words and you start moving this blade around again like you described, your eyes sort of semi locked to these blue sapphires. You slowly begin to realise that the blue isn't just in the sapphires. The blue has almost started to obscure your vision, sort of growing and flooding your eyes and your and what you're seeing. You can still see the blue of the eyes and the shape of the dragon's head, but everything in the room has started going blue, and then everything behind that blue is sort of fading away. Um, can you do a wisdom saving throw for me, please? Oh, snap! Yeah. Oh, that's shocking. That's a two. Um, uh, no, sorry. That's five. You take three points of damage. Um, and as this, you sort of feel that twin just a bit of scratch to you at this point. Um, but it feels like a physical sort of pain. But then you're aware that you can't have nicked yourself or anything. You've got your armour on it. It's not like you just like mis mishandled it. Um, As you focus in on these blue eyes and you pay attention to the blue around you, you will notice that as quickly as the blue starts to fill your vision, the blue starts to fade away again. Only now all the, all the treasures and all the gold and all the artifacts in the room have, have disappeared. As you look around, you see this, you, 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 you notice very, very quickly that either something has happened or you are in a different room. Mm. 
As you look around, you see this new room is constructed with a combination of wood and bamboo and paper in a minimalist yet elegant design. The floor is a remarkable polished wood that almost has your own reflection staring back at you. The walls are adorned with calligraphy skulls and paintings de de depicting legendary martial artists and scenes from ancient battles, inspiring students to strive for excellence and uphold the honour and traditions of their art. Um, do me a perception check. That will be 21. You look at these paintings around the room. Um, the first thing you think is that this is oddly comforting. This is oddly not satisfying. This is oddly welcoming. It feels right. This is not a strange place. On the surface, this is a very strange thing that's just happened, but this is not, not an out-and-out out strange place to be for you. And as you notice all the artwork that is depicted around the room, there are several sort of paintings depicting different battles and scenes. One of them is of a guy in like one-on-one -on -one close combat with somebody, like in the midst in the midst of battle. The one next to it is a man stood tall, pointing a weapon out, leading an army, leading a force of army towards someone else. There's another one of somebody sort of a different sort of picture of celebrations but in the back you can see like another a guy standing out differently and every one of these pictures is a different battle a different scene a different moment um 21 yeah on a 21 you notice two things two things and apart from how cool these pictures look two things stick out to you the most every single person who is the focus point of these pictures the man are the man in combat the man leading the army um is wearing the exact set of armour that you are wearing and the second thing being that every single one of them is wielding the sword that you now hold in your hand. <laughs> As you are taking in the surroundings you sort of realise this. Do you do anything particular in this moment as you realise? Um, I think get as close to these designs as possible um, and is, is, is it uh, how lucid is this you can walk around it yeah yeah so walking over to these designs and with my free hand almost reach like reaching out to sort of feel the bumps of the calligraphy and just to and take my hand across it and almost trying to sense what 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 these are trying to say and, and almost you know when you admire art mm -hmm. but you know you're going full fledged here and just Correctly, yeah. To, to feel almost the stories that they're telling. So you reach out with your hand, still clutching the um, Draconis Emeris, did we call it? Uh, in your other hand, and as you reach out, sort of slowly, apprehensively, but yet confidently, which is a sentence I never thought I'd say, you get barely millimetres from touching it, and you hear the sound of somebody clearing their throat behind you. As you sort of spin around instantly, the, the sound sort of snapping you out of whatever thought you had, you instantly grip the blade as if in, in preparation. You spin around and see what you can only describe, still on that 21, on or in that 21, as yourself. A man, same sort of build, same sort of height, in exactly the same armour carrying exactly the same blade as he looks at you. I think through years of you wearing this armour you have you're quite confident in reading people's demeanour in all the armours. So as you look at this guy's armour you can see the little um little cracks around his eyes and the sort of bend of a bend of his cheeks underneath <laughs> the mask where a smile might be. And he says many warriors have held the weapon that you currently hold in your hands. Many more have attempted to wield the weapon you currently hold in your hands. Tell me now, Captain Zozo, which one are you? A warrior or simply a man playing at fighting? Do you have the skills to claim this weapon? Why do you deserve to wield a Draconis Erinus? I am... Um... Unsure 
quite what is in front of me. However, I may answer your question more confidently. I am much more than a warrior. I am a leader. I am a brother. I am their blood. I am the new dawn personified. And I will guide anyone who follows me to a better future. He patiently waits for you to finish. And that smile you can tell is there becomes a chuckle as he reaches to his waist for his own version of the blade to your hand and slowly and deliberately draws it and sort of in a flourish brings it round and chuckles again and says show me uh, can you roll initiative for me no. I will make a one-handed attack mm -hmm. uh, for my first action. Uh, I'll move close enough. If, if that's yeah, 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 don't worry about that. Um, this room is small enough that your movement would take you anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, move close enough. Uh, I'll roll to attack. Yeah, roll to attack. Uh, one-handed attack. Uh, that will be. When at least 25. That hits, yeah, it easily hits. <laughs> at least 25, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it hits. Uh, cool, so that'll be 2d6. Please tell me you're about to try and carry on balancing dice on top of the ones you've already done. <laughs> uh, so, that's two. Uh, so, 13. 13. Is there anything else from you, sir? Uh, Yes, because <clears throat> I have extra attack. So I'll attack you do. Again. Yep. That is a sixteen. Uh, that just hits. So the two D six again. Uh, that one's not as impressive. That's a five. No drama. Is that in your turn? Um, yeah. So, so as you come in and attack him, hitting him twice, as he knowing the armour as well as you do, you're able to identify the Wilker spots and pounce to make sure that you, you do uh, that uh, attack just as well. He will sort of take a step back and attack you back in the same fashion. Uh, 15. Misses. And then he will take his second attack, uh, which is 17. Yes. 17 will hit. He is going to attack you. Uh, uh, sorry, that will be uh, 11 points of damage. So he rushes in to sort of, as you rush in to meet him and get two attacks on him, he's ready to be able to sort of counter them. The first one, because of the way he's been hit, yeah. you manage to sort of duck out of the way of it. But as you duck out of the way of it, you get hit by the sort of the back down swing of the sword as it slashes you across sort of another gap in your armour. He will then take 10 feet back to sort of prepare himself as he stands yep. in position waiting for you to come at him again. Your turn. Uh, my turn. I will start losing my bonus action first and cast a Zephyr Strike. Yeah. So, spell uh, to ends don't provoke attacks on two. Mm -hmm. uh, once before, before it ends, can give myself advantage on one weapon attack. Yep. That attack deals an extra 1d8 force damage. Yeah. Um, then whether I hit or miss, I can move the extra feet. So, we'll move close enough. Mm -hmm. With the effects of Zephyr Strike, sort of moving like the wind, mm -hmm. almost like a mirage effect wherever I move, it's like an after effect of where I was. Yeah. Um, and we'll go in for a. I'm going to go with the first first attack, so I'll do two attacks again. Mm -hmm. uh, I say moving like the wind, and the first one I'm going to come around and use, and this time grab it with two hands. Okay. And do a two handed attack. Mm -hmm. So that would be uh, over 24. Yeah, that hit. With ease. So. Do you get the advantage on that? I can elect to give myself on one. Okay, you, don't really need. you could try and get a crit, but you've already rolled a 24. So. Yeah, I have, and then I, can, well, I think I can elect to give it on my other one as well. You can, yeah, it's just once before the spell ends. Isn't so it? I know this one's hit, so I'm not going to. I might as well save it for in case do. So that'll be. Uh, four. Uh, sorry. Uh, 
14. Uh, damage? Yeah. Plus. Oh, hang on, let me just check how it works. Because I need to just check it's not the one you give advantage to. Uh, yeah, it is the one. Right, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so don't worry about that. So I'll make a second one. Yeah. Uh, so coming around with the two hands and keeping the two hands on it. So it's sort of one smooth movement round like this. Mm -hmm. And then we're just going to tilt the blade round, sort of roll it, keeping the two hands on. I'll bring it straight back. Mm -hmm. uh, and I will choose to give myself advantage. Okay, yeah, no problem. Uh, which we'll need because that was below 11. That will be 19. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. 19 on the dice hits. So, and then that one will get an extra. Get the extra Zephyr strike. 1d8 yeah. from 4 damage. So it's only going to be 3d8. Okay. Uh, really, really bad because that had two ones in it. That's five. Oh. Um, as you come round, twisting that blade for the second time and come back up and catch him sort of at an angle under the arm and probably gushing him, he will drop his weapon, drop down to a knee, um, out of combat, mm -hmm. defeated, has no intention to die. <laughs> he will lay his blade down, which as he stands back up, the blade that he was holding will then sort of fade away mm -hmm. slowly. And as he gets back to a do me a perception check as he stands back up. Uh, 19. Uh, on a 19 you notice that as he stands back up he does hold himself and he is hurt but there is no sign of any blood, there is no sign of any wound, it's just he did take the damage, he did, was defeated. Um, as he stands back up he will slowly lift his hands and remove the helmet which again as he goes to like put it on an imaginary table beside him will vanish mm -hmm. next to him and the face that you were so sure was going to be your own is the face of a small, sort of older, um, for want of a better word, oriental looking gentleman. Um, as the face of the man that saved your life many years ago looks back at you with that same smile that he's not dropped since the minute he saw you. And say, you have come so far, my son. There is not much more to go. And with that, that blue light from the eyes will fill the room again. And as it slowly fades away, you will find yourself back in the treasure room. And then, so as you look down at the blade, that, that sort of light blue has softened into a darker blue that matches the rest of the blade. And a sort of warmth fills you from the hand where you're holding it as you have successfully attuned with that magical item. Would you like to do anything in this moment? Um, that whole um, interaction passed relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, feeling the warmth from the blade, um, from the from the hilt, um, got the scabbard right on my hilt. Mm -hmm. So um, sheathing the, the newly attuned blade now on my side, still feeling the warmth from the handle. Um, the smile underneath those those mats. As, as he's. Didn't have a chance to say it to him because that interaction was far too quick. Um, but he's going to put his other hand on it and just like, thank, thank you. When Fairbrook left with Zozo, you two are heading to a bar or a drinking place. Do you want to pick back up there? Yeah. yeah. So next morning, we've had quite a few. Next morning. We'll just do it that night. That night? Yeah, come and drink it. <laughs> oh. How many are we in? Are we like start? Are we quite a few deep? Or are we like? Let me d twenty. You're plastered. Uh, I'm at seventeen. <laughs> you have had a lot to drink. We've had a lot to drink. No, 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 no. You have had a lot to drink. I've been having hot water. <laughs> <laughs> he is. No, don't say that, Joe. Um, he bottles off earlier. Um, so there was a point I can remember talking about where I wanted to speak to Cold. Mm -hmm. Because way back when, when the whole Luther and finding out and Cold wanting to kill me and everything like that, like four days back, ago, about four days ago, yeah, yeah. that's really <laughs> went on this nice little spiritual journey of it all. And um, good old soul search. While we was in that fighting, obviously I kept having this voice in the back of my head. You did, and obviously like there'd been the unicorn and the bald head oh you are bald now aren't yeah. you yeah <laughs> so like Matrin's now on this line of 
is this self doubt causing Matrin to continue on this path? And he's going to sit now absolutely, absolutely bladdered, talking to Cold. And he's going to turn around to Cold and go, You may hate me, you may dislike what I did back on the ship. And I've been through many emotions since we last spoke about that. But it stops now. What I did is what I did. And actually, he stepped out of line. And yes, I shouldn't have killed him. But that was entirely accidental. But just a prank, bro. Uh, Do me a just to quote a. This is in character. Just to quote a famous bard, cool motive, still murder. <laughs> <laughs> it was murder. However, if we go step out this door, cold, we have murdered many a man. Is that cold blood? It well, wasn't murder in cold blood. I haven't. You're talking to a guy who murders in cold blood for a living. See, you just reinforced. Like, I was. What I, about the ships that we break the seal from, Cold? What about the ships that we steal from? I've I had every opportunity to ask if everyone was okay on them ships. I always. That's my first. Priority. People die when we take them ships. Well, who's. I'm not doing them. Well, that's a lie. <laughs> See what I mean, Cold? We are all. We live the life of murder. But and only we retaliation. Come. Only retaliation. And I retaliated to Luther. However, we're digressing from the point. I don't like killing people. I don't like fighting in general. I know you don't cold. And I genuinely am saying I was I do feel bad about killing Luther. However, this is leading to self doubt which is causing me to doubt my own abilities and it stops now. Oh, so it's it's bad when it affects you. Yes. I see. See, I was gonna think of your bond or whatever something goes because I don't have to like you, but I can forgive you. But, but we are brothers, Cold, and we are on the ship as brothers, uh -huh. all of us, one uh -huh. and the same. And yes, we don't always disagree with what our brothers do. But we always love each other at the end of the day. Not a blind devotion. Is... Are you telling me you won't walk through fire for the captain? Are you telling me you won't walk through fire for Typhus? Just roll me an emotional blackmail check. <laughs> 18? I guess, yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> pretty convincing, Gold. Yeah. For, for a second, though, when you were going, uh huh, uh huh, I just thought he'd be backing out slowly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's the plan. That's everyone's doing with his new sword. Guys! Completely out of character. Holding your rifle and your sword. <laughs> Who's that guy? Um, I was saying, you're completely. Uh, we're walking through fire for. Oh, yeah, I'd hunt it walking through fire for the captain. I've just remembered you are fire. Mm -hmm. uh, Do you know what? Walk through the ocean for the captain. For and the captain, typhus. 100%. Captain. And typhus. Captain. And that's the problem. We are all brothers and we should all walk through the ocean for each other. I will, I will take care of every single person in the ship. I have to always. And you are making my devotion. Head. However, I am going to leave. Where are we? I don't know if you went down to like, there wasn't a tavern because it burnt down. So, sort of adjacent, kitchen adjacent. Is, is there a window? Yeah, you're on like the ground floor. I, I was going to say, I thought it was a kitchen Cold went to and there was a store yeah. next to it. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean they stayed in there. I thought they might it was in just, the fort. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they are in the fort, yeah. but they've just found somewhere to so, sit. So as I go back like into the cupboard to go uh, fix another drink. I'm going to plan the ledge of the window, summon my sword. And I'm gonna fly away. I'm gonna cast fly myself and leave. Where are you heading? Anywhere. Uh, tell me where you would like to land. You can go wherever you want, but just I can fly for an hour. <laughs> so an hour later, <laughs> you're like that episode of uh, Rick and Morty where Jerry's just floating with the light shoes. Uh, I'm gonna find the highest point of the uh, fort and just sit there with Dara. So you fly out the window. You find a big sort of spire-like tower 
to like the north side of the win of the of the of the fort. This scene was supposed to be with you as well. <laughs> what Peter Pan and Wendy? Yep. With Dara as Tinker. I was going to say, I was going to go. Do you trust me? I can show you the world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you trust? Me? Um, I don't know why, but yes. <laughs> so I'm guessing he's thrown off by now. Yeah. Match so we'll come to you out. in a minute. We'll do you. Go on. Matchroom comes back out, looking around cold. Starts so just going to search, and I'm just going to end up spending the rest of the night. Like, keep searching for cold. But once I've run out of alcohol, come back to the kitchen, and then search a different path around this whole fort, and just keep searching. Well, he thinks he's going around a different path. He's just yeah. going <laughs> yeah. Are you actively now trying to stay away from? I'm not the highest point of the fort. I'm, right. I'm pretty confident. Do I'm not, you do me a constitution saving throw, please? With disadvantage, because you continue to drink. Uh, I'm going to say that's a 17, but. What, well, lowest one? I rolled a 12. That's my lowest. That's pretty good. But you might have heard something, because there was like. Uh, <laughs> like flake that I think. 17. <laughs> right, yeah. It's a saving throw, not a right. check, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. saving throw. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah okay, I'm 17, good. fine. So you're a seasoned pro at this drinking thing. You manage to down flagon after flagon of ale. You find pouch after pouch of wine, some weird clear liquid that somebody told you was going get, to get you even drunker, and you have one of them as well. But yeah, you, you, there's like some powders. <laughs> You meet him in the one point someone the brings out a drip you're like yeah, yeah. just put it in <laughs> but <laughs> you, you're fine you, you manage to you get a bit light headed you get a little bit you've got a nice mid like session drunk going on but yeah for the love of money you can't seem to find cold anywhere so we are going to leave you searching cold you arrive at a like a big sort of tower spiry thing that comes off sort of like the north side of the wall and of, of the fort and as you approach it, you can see like there's a staircase that wraps around it and a little door. So you land in front of that door and sort of give it a push and find it's open. And you you head in this it's pretty much an empty room, there's a couple of crates about, maybe a little chair. Do you do anything specific? Just sit on the windowsill, staring out. Where's Dara? Dara is I'm gonna summon Dara into my lap. So as you look down and you see Dara on the floor, Dara's flying as if like with you, just gets she's part of you at the end of the day, so she can fly as you do and she as you look down at Dara, do me a perception check please. That would be a So you look down at Dara and she is burning brightly. As oh well. hold on. Hold on. Two. <laughs> There's, there's Dara. <laughs> so what? She's burning brightly as usual. She doesn't seem to. When you look at her face, you see that she is. She reflects your emotion quite well to you. Um, sort of the only other being that you truly gets you. I think is a fair comment to say. And as you look at her, she. She seems fine. She doesn't seem. She she seems a little brighter than you would assume her to be burning through. Sort of the, the emotional state that you are in. And as you summon her up to your, just to one hand, is it one hand? Or both hands? Just on the lap. Just on your lap. As you, she jumps up onto your lap as you're sat there and she sort of snuggles herself down. Um, and you sort of go to sort of, she's not, she's made of fire, isn't she? She's not got hair, but you sort of yeah. would ruffle her hair. So <laughs> as you, as you go to sort of ruffle your, uh, her Can hair I, uh, a little bit. Just take my bandana off. Bandana right off. Yeah. And just look at it as. Are we enjoying this? It's just her. We just keep getting hurt. And then... So you, you've got your bandana in one hand, you've got Dara on your lap, mm -hmm. and as you're talking to her and to yourself at the same time, your other hand sort of absent mindedly goes to stroke her a little bit, and as you connect with her a searing hot intense pain starts at the tip of your fingertips that's weird as you look at it 
you notice that as you look at your fingers, not only is it hurt, hurt burning you and hurting you, which is alien, it's weird, like you're literally made of, you're like immune to stuff like this, but it's burning and it's hot and it's horrible. You notice that the pain spreads and starts burning your hands and then to your arm and then to your bicep. You, I'm screaming. You are. <laughs> Give me another perception check. Oh, 15. You know it's on a 15 that not only is this pain growing, lines of burning white hot light are forming everywhere that there is pain across your arm in like a spider web of lights and pain. It spreads up to your bicep and then up to your shoulder. And as you sort of stand, panicking, screaming, not understanding, sort of claps your hands together. Fall back up. After we're dead. (laughs) You clap your hands together like in panic and then you see that where your hands touch, the same thing happens outside and it starts spreading and spreading and spreading and spreading. You notice that it's spreading across your chest and down your stomach and all these searing hot pain. Not enough to damage you because you've got immunity to like heat and fire and stuff like that. Not immunity, sort of resistance. Um... So you're, you're aware enough to not let it affect you, not let it, like your innate sort of fight and combat mode, as we've referred to it before, is there to sort of protect you, but you start, it spreads down your stomach and onto your legs, and even like that, you're, you're exposed midriff, you see various different lines of bee burning light, and then it starts to fade. Just as quickly as it's built up, it starts to fade away again, and you see that the lines start to fade away a little bit you can sort of see the remnants of them on your arms as you look down at your hands and arms you're not sure whether it's you can just see them because it's burnt into your eyes like you've been staring at the sun or something but Do you have a texture to them um, no it's just like just as you recover in an instant immediately it's the same pain appears and feels on your top right hand peck your chest growing and growing just in one specific place hotter hotter more painful more bright you can see under your breastplate there's a light shining from underneath it you do anything yeah strip off <laughs> like try and you rip off your little sort of like top You've got a breastplate, but you've also got like a yeah, jacket yeah, yeah. thing. You rip that off, you rip off the breastplate. Try just, like, I'm just like clawing at it, trying to get it off. You, you, you see how bright this now, this bright light is being now. It's searing to your Dara, skin. Help, help you, look, Dara. you look over at Dara, and Dara, you can see her breathing, but it's on the floor, sort of mimicking your pain, as in she's writhing in pain as well. Again, it doesn't look like she's hurt, her, but she can obviously feel the pain. Uh, I think instinct would kick in and I'd immediately forget about me and just rush over to her. You take a step forward and the pain sort of spikes as if you've just been like kicked in the chest a little bit. Still going forward? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. You step by step drag yourself forward and as you get to her and sort of roll her over to look at her, she's weirdly smiling and she's sort of and only you can hear it she's giggling and she's laughing and then eventually again the pain fades away but this time rather than the light and the line disappearing you see the light fades and scratched into your skin the flesh across your right peck there is the word vengeance with three different numbers underneath it Three. Hang on. Three. I'll, rather than trying to work out how they are myself, you notice from time working with types a lot, there is a series of co- coordinates underneath this line. What this, the fuck, Dara? Dara jumps back up in your hand. You she know. Says self, she's what lovely. is this? <laughs> what did you do? Like, quiet treatment, as always. She's fine. She's like the, not the happiest you've ever seen her, but she doesn't feel that. She, suddenly she doesn't feel no pain. Trying She's you can, trying to get rid of it. Yeah, I'd like to rub it off. You rub it for a few minutes, give it at it, and as you turn away, you see it's it's still there. 
almost like it has been burnt into your skin. You don't do these a lot. Would you like to do an insight check? No, I'm going to try and find Typhus. You're going to go try and find Typhus? Yeah. Okay, you can head down to try and find Typhus. Typhus, where do you think you are in this moment? So, uh, so this is... Up. This is maybe two, three hours after we had the big meeting in the war room. So I would have gone and uh, found some of the senior members of the crew, that's obviously not the council, and gone. Yeah. Uh, told them to raid the Obsidian Federation ships. Nice. Uh, especially getting their flags, as well as getting a full set of uniforms for the entirety of the crew in case we need to do... Infiltration. Exactly. Very clever. Uh, you um, can all mark in your inventories personally that you will that now eventually have a set of Obsidian Federation armour. Uh, we will sort out what the crew gets from the ship specifically yes. in yeah, a bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whenever. Um, as well as also um, making sure that um, doing, as far as like actual resources go, go um, one for the crew, one for the fort, for everything on the... It's thing. very, very honourable of you. Um, as and would probably have gone for a wander around the fort aimlessly yeah. while seeing if there's anything that brings back a positive memory trying to wash out all the memories of that he has with his mother in this place but trying to remember all the stuff he had with his father um, I think as you head round the fort sort of undirectional and un, yeah. un I think... Um, muscle... well, well, also trying to avoid a drunk... Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're Matron. very aware of Matron is stomping around. The... Matron hasn't worked out that there are more than... what Because he's he's fine. He's drunk a lot and he's fine. But he's at that stage of drunk where he's forgot there's an upstairs. Cool. So he's just going kitchen, dining room, hallway, yard. Kit... Oh, no, he must be in the kitchen. Oh, I bet he's in the dining room. That's the sort of route he's going. Yeah. Backwards and forwards, keep getting drinks at the time. Yeah. And every so often someone just hears... <laughs> you are convinced you found five different rooms that have all got drinks in. You just keep going through the same room. It's like Louise's mansion. <laughs> so you you're aimlessly sort of walking around, um, sort of lost in your own thoughts a little bit. And I think muscle memories maybe takes over a little bit from all them years ago. And you find yourself in in your bedroom from when you were a child. Your bedroom is oddly smashed up and wrecked but still as you expect all your stuff that you left is still here nothing's been taken out do you like to do anything specific in there i'll have a quick glance over see if anything you find um, i was gonna say because i had a few maps from when i was younger which i'd take yes yeah. just as because i think you've, you've got like um i'm not sure what the 1500s pirate equivalent of a children's first atlas is but you've got some rudimentary drawn <laughs> like not very detailed block colours like this is Mandalay yeah. this is uh, on a rock cliff this is another island yeah. this is this one um, so you find them and they bring oddly the first thing you think when you see them is is memories of your mother because as much as you despise the way she was and you even more so despise her now it was the hours and hours that she would spend drilling information to about like other nations and their leaders and other noble houses and then the geography of it on top that actually sparked your interest in maps and geography and, and sort of um, wayfinding a bit. She is in no way responsible for how good you've become at it. That is purely on your merit as working of working at it. Um, but yeah. Then, as you ruffle through, you find underneath there is a picture. And um, do me a insight check. Eighteen. You've got quite a good memory. You're quite an intelligent chap. But you, for the life of you, can't remember this picture being taken because you left when you were like early teens, mid teens. Yeah, uh, between twelve and thirteen. Yeah, so you you're, you're probably ten, eleven in this picture. So you're very aware that I don't know, I don't remember that. That's one of the later years I was here. And in this picture, you'll notice that you're stood there. Your father is 
slightly behind you and your mother is stood beside him as you pose for a sort of a family portrait but oddly just as you look at it for a second you go that's that's not my mother's face and then in a moment that's passed you look at it again and it is your mother's face and just for a second something else was on that bit of paper can you do anything? That's a sense of curiosity. Mm -hmm. Then pocket it. You can pocket it. You can include that in your inventory. And what I'll say at this point is, if you went directly to find Typhus Cold after speaking to a couple of people, they said, "Oh yeah, he was headed in that way." You find Typhus. Still. Shit. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Any other times, but I just panicked. You're not. Flew out the window. I don't think you're like weeping or sad, but no. I think. Do me an inside check. I'll just tell you our emotions. On an 18, you... It's one of those situations where you're not weeping, you're not crying, but, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart as a, as a term of love for the character, even cold can sense Typhus isn't okay right now. I've just barged in. Typhus, please, I need... Yeah. Typhus will instantly try and put on a mask, as it were, yeah. and go, what's up, Cold? You tell me. It's been a long day, Cold, but clearly you, you've you got something on your mind right now. What's up? Yeah. Um, what's this? And I point up a chest. It says... <laughs> um, you're, I think you're reading it upside down. That looks a lot more like coordinates to me. Let's have a quick look at them. And it does say the word vengeance as well as oh, vengeance. Yeah. Oh yeah. So <laughs> I never thought to check whether Tom could read. I can't read. That's what I read upside down. Um, that says vengeance, and there's some numbers. And let's have a look. Right, I've had a lot of adrenaline right now. I don't know. That, Okay, so those bright light. Okay, I've lost my top. <laughs> we'll find that in a minute, Cole. And it really, it really hurt. It really burned. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ignore that, David. Don't, don't even. So as soon as I hear that, um, I wave my hand and the door shuts. I, I use my hand Change. to to close the door. That's really cool. Um, Thanks. The, it really hurt. I've never okay. really been burnt yeah. since yeah. being orange. Um, obviously, um, before then I got burnt all the time. Because, you know, but ever since I changed, it really hurt, Typhus. Okay. Okay. I I understand. It hurt. Uh, right. And I've do lost my top. <laughs> we'll do that. We'll we'll go find your top next. Um, so what happened to cause the pain? Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait, just hit me. Fair enough. So I, I assume I, I assume well, I can no, go. I did have an argument with Matron. In fairness, I Matron. in fairness, I do feel pain whenever I talk to Matron as well. <laughs> um, <Thank you. laughs> can I go and inspect the? Do you um, want to do an investigation on um, on the? You're looking at the numbers. Yes. Do I get advantage on this because it's coordinates and mappy stuff? I will allow Lloyd to give you the help action if you would like. I don't know. Do you mind or do I put the dice down? Do we have to? <laughs> Hang on. So, uh, investigation, was that? Yeah. 18. Um, so, Cold, the first thing you see when you sort of touch it, look yep. at it, um, is that every time you touch it, he winces, because it's still quite painful. Like The, the constant pain is, is gone, but it's quite painful. For so, it's sort of it. like a couple of days after getting a tattoo. Sort of. Yes, yeah, that sort of thing. And the second thing you not sort of notice is, as you sort of press it, it's 
the the skin rather than getting a tattoo the skin's like being burned like if anything in your knowledge you would have had you would have most associate this with like being branded as such like so more scar tissue than, yeah more scar tissue than like a tattoo as such um as close as cold can get to scar, scar tissue on an 18 uh typhus doing what typhus does he looks at the numbers and in that sort of way that you do where you plot the points in your head to give you a rough idea you on an 18 you sort of think actually i've i know i know that i've, I've seen them numbers before i've got them written down somewhere and you see what you're like banging stuff with you, yes. and you with all your, so you pull out like a wad of papers and you start flicking through and as you get about halfway through you do see the numbers you've got a map charted to this point and as you pull it to the top you look at it and you look at Cole and you sort of think I don't know why I never made that connection before and as you turn it round to show Cold, Ember's Throne the island that Cold grew up on that's my home is on the map okay is there someone on Ember's Throne that you don't particularly like out of curiosity no, everyone's amazing. Well, I. N- well, accident happened. <laughs> okay. Because you've got the word revenge and the coordinates to your home on your chess goal. As um, much as I. Uh, I don't know what's going on with Matron, like losing his hair and summoning unicorns, it is weird. But equally, apparently if we annoy him, his hair falls out and he summons unicorn. So, that, that I think as far as I'm concerned, I'm not seeing a downside at this moment in time. Yeah, the unicorn's pretty pretty. Yeah, the unicorn was very nice. But Ember's Throat, there's nothing on it. It's just, it's just a fishing town. And a volcano. Having looked at the map... Mm-hmm. Do I see how a how detailed is this map of the island, and b or and b it, on this map is there any notable to topology or? Uh, have you ever been? I don't. Yes. I have not I'm been. Told was there. Oh, this is going what four years ago? Okay. I, was gonna um, say, I have I obviously Tyvus has extensively travelled, but I don't believe. Do me been. a history tra- check in relation to the island. Um, because you've got your map, you can have advantage. Thank you. I mean, with thirteen. Uh, on a thirteen, um, you obviously you you must know about Anderson because you you draw your own maps. Like yeah. you you've obviously charted it at some point, and as you flick back through your memory a little bit, you can just remember like a couple of years back, like maybe three, maybe like. Between two and four years ago, you were either as part of this crew or if you've been on a crew previously, you were planning to raid it, but didn't because it was too dangerous. Maybe something along them lines, you thought? Now, was that... No, that's fine. So, I'll, I'll go to Carl going... From my memory, the only time I was anywhere near there, we didn't land because of some danger. I mean, so full disclosure, I was pushed into the volcano. Ah! Who pushed you into the volcano? Right, so... Bumble fish in town. Yes. Cold. Friend to all. Uh, this is a fact of life. Cold is friend to all. Friend to all. Um, so a, a group of uh, really cool adventurers came to the village one day and they were really they wanted a tour guide and I was like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll do that, yeah. I'm really good for that because I know the island well and, you know, I didn't really know. I don't really, didn't really have a family, but I just, everyone, I knew everyone. So uh, they were like, oh, we need to see the volcano. Do you want to invite me to the volcano? I was like, yeah, yeah we'll go see the volcano. So got days and days, trips, made really good friends with these guys, whatever, um, got to the volcano. And uh, it turns out they were cultists who wanted to awaken some fire spirit in the volcano and needed a sacrifice. Pushed in. Next thing I remember 
Well, there's a lot of pain. Waking up on like the lip of a volcano. Uh, sword in my hand. And I was red and orange. Path is going to look at Cold and make an obvious gesture just to go, Do you want a hug, bro? Effectively. Uh, yeah, sure. So, just give. Give the hug. Go. And go. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Trying to avoid the peck. Still sensitive. Yeah. Still and just go, I'm sorry they did that to you, Cold. No one should have to go through something like that. Do you know what cult they were with? Um, Typhus makes a mental note to, in his spare time to do some research into cults, especially okay. ones that have affiliation with fire spirits and what not. Is this the first time you've told somebody what happened? Yeah. So I'm right in thinking that the ca- captain also doesn't know. I think so. Cool. Uh, we will pan away from you guys sort of embracing as brothers, sort of the emotional um, empathy hanging there. So, we will leave off with Typhus and Cold embracing in a brotherly, supportive, camaraderie moment. Do you want to do something before we go? Are you recording? I was about to say, are you recording? Yes, I am. I'm streaming, yeah. Kyron, what do you think you've been up to these last few hours? I have no clue. The last thing I did was punch the door and broke it a bit. You did. So are you still in the same room? Pissed off. Yeah, I'm just sort of in this room just with the electric sort of dancing around my body like not sort of self reflecting but sort of going over the events because a lot has happened in the space of a couple of weeks you know so if I remember rightly you were frustrated because nobody knows where Ralphina is yeah yeah obviously you may as an extension of that um, nobody knows where Skate is uh, can you do me? Just trying to find the most appropriate role. But yeah, it's kind of in this frame of mind where it's just frustrating that it's a lot of events to take in. It's a bit was he? Was he? At one point, you. I'm sure you said in the last session that you were. You weren't aware that other people knew about Skadi. Uh, I think Carver did he? I can't remember if Carver. No, I know everybody it. in the crew knows now, but to your knowledge, nobody else on the island knew about Skadi, with the exception of Carver. Um, on uh, Rockcliffe Bay. You yes. Mean? Oh, sorry, I thought you meant the current one because no. it was uh, Bran mentioned it, wasn't it? Yeah, and I think if I remember rightly, Kyron's reaction to that was a bit yeah shocked. Um, well, he tried to sort of gloss over it. Give me a history check. History. Oh, you can do history or insight if you want. I think insight might be. She's been having an affair, but no, she's not. <laughs> insight. And that sucks. That's a seven. You, you're trying to. I. With with you trying to process everything that's happened and process everything that's happened over the few days, process all the information you've been given. Obviously. Uh, you are fully supportive of your crew and your captain and this quest that you seem to be on very very type as focused but you are very but on top of that you have got your own shit going on so you try and try and figure anything out and for some reason that 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 fact that Bran seemed to know about your relationship with Skadi obviously people know about Skadi she lives on Rockcliffe Bay it's not like she's just mm-hmm. there living in secret it would just our connection yeah but your relationship yeah. um but yeah you you struggle to come up with find a reason as to why Bran might know or why she might have found reason to tell Bran or trust Bran. It just you just can't put the two and two together. From in your mind, you know this person from this area of your life and this person for this area of life, and you cannot make that connection as to why they would know each other. Um, as you all sort of sat there, um, sort of hole in the wall where you punched a door, sort of not broken but maybe a yeah, bit dented. Splinted, I think it's um, Arm still sort of glowing as the spell sort of wears, as wore off over the time. Um, you sort of go perception check. Perception. Mm-hmm. 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 
19. Yeah, you, you're sat there, your head in your hand, you're racking your brain to think of any reason as to how Skady and Bran know each other. Where could Skady have gone? Is Skady still with Ralphina? Where's Ralphina gone? She she was dead set on not leaving the island. You just hear a little tapping at the window. Well, I guess I'm checking that out. <laughs> yeah. you open the, window? the worst thing to do in a horror movie. But yeah, sure, let's go check out you... the weird tapping. Open. It's <laughs> cold on the roof. <laughs> As he's flying around. <laughs> Why? Well, like last, What's this? Well, like last boys. <laughs> no, I, I was yes. thinking more for a second like Jen and IT crowd when she's outside his window. <laughs> Stop telling people let you me, slept with me. me <laughs> um, you go to the window and you pull sort of <laughs> curtains back. And through like the sort of. It's not, a, it's not raining, it's not mm. snowing. Yeah. It's not sunny, it's like a dull day, early evening sort of time. Mm. Um, you can just make the outside of like a blue, looks like it could be blue bird tapping mm. at the window. It's not the window. cold then. It's not cold. <laughs> <though, it's> not. <laughs> Unless cold is like polymorphed. <laughs> just play a prank. Yeah, I'll open the window. You open the window and this bird sort of instantly flies past you, um, does a couple of laps of the room. It's it's translucent. It's instantly you realise. Um, what was your perception? Twelve. Uh, sorry, nineteen. Yeah. Um, it's clearly not a real bird. Some sort of illusion. Some sort of magic mm. thing. Um, a bit like Mei Chan looking. A like. little bit more. Um, not to give away where this is going, and for people that haven't seen the films, I apologise. Think more patronacy from Harry Potter. More mm. like a blue yeah, and yeah, silver yeah. sort okay. of translucent animal. Um, couple of laps around the room and just rests on the corner of like the bed post and as you turn to look at it it looks back at you and without opening its mouth clearly talking to you telepathically you hear the unmistakable voice of somebody you know say the next time you scot you carve something into my tree make sure you know what it I'm what it mean, I'm going to know what it means. The voice of Carver LaRue fills your head. What did you do? Um well that's the thing, like am I able to communicate back or is it yeah, like you, a messenger? It's, no, it's a telecommun uh, tele Oh it's like a two way thing. Yeah. Oh okay. You can communicate. Okay, with I wasn't sure if it was that like animal messenger where it just sends a message and then you have to send it back kind of thing. No. Okay. Um I'd be like, well, uh it got you to contact me, didn't it? <laughs> You're aware that you were in my home. If you wanted to speak to me, you could have spoke to me. Yeah, I didn't feel there was a good time with the rest of the crew there. What do you need, Tyron? I need help. To put it frankly, and I have no clue who to really turn to in this. You know more of my life than probably most people in my I know life. more of your life probably than I want to. Yeah, probably. What can I help you with? What's the matter? Well, um, as well connected as you are, you know that Ralphina has Scardi. Yes. Um, it seems to be uh, far reaching at this point, as it was Bran who notified me that Ralphina's left the island now. Yes, she has. But I need help tracking her down. Tracking Ralphina? Yeah. I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. And then I might disappear. How does Ralphina track you? Um, with blood. With blood. She has your blood. Mm -hmm. So if she can track blood, then maybe other people can track blood. Maybe you could track blood. This, this, in your head, you can see Carver in his standing in his kitchen, sort of eye, fingers on his yeah, eyes. Because I'm, I'm just going to raise my eyebrow as you say that faith. Right. Okay. <laughs> the art of tracking through the means that Ralphina uses isn't something she was born with. 
So, if, say, you could use that same method to <coughs> trap blood in people's blood, how might you think you could use that ability to find where she is? Mm. I don't know. I'm, I'm if just I look at a magical map, yeah. Imagine a magical map with me. I'm sure your friend Typhus seems to have quite a few of them. And I want to track where two of my swords are. And two, two places, places on that magical map appear. But, but I, I know, know I've got, got one, one of my swords. swords. So, so one, one of, of the, the two markers on the map must be me. So you mean track my own blood? You weaker. How? Like, oh, oh, I've got, got no, no idea. idea. <laughs> okay, do you know somebody who does? I might know somebody that could. Or I might know where somebody might be that could. Are you willing to share? I've told you this. There's not a lot on Rockcliffe Bay that happens at Idols. <coughs> but at the minute, I'm not on Rockcliffe Bay. So there is a, not a lot elsewhere that I can see. Why don't you ask your captain where you're heading next? And he will dissipate. Not fly back out. Yeah. The bird will just well, dissipate. Just before he does, I'll give him a nod. So sort of... Just yeah. make it clear that I, I'm, I'm following you. Yeah, and he will dissipate. <coughs> and as he dissipates, the window will slam shut. And he will, he will leave you standing there on your own. Okay. So obviously at this point, Kyron's then going to start having um, not doubts, but like suspicions about what the captain could be keeping from the rest of the crew. As well. You can do an insight check into that phrase about asking your captain if you want. Mm -hmm. In an attempt to find more information. That's a 11. Uh, on an 11, what I will say is Zozo, honestly, hand on heart, isn't keeping anything secret from anybody in relation to what might be at certain places. I'd also say to the table, Zozo might not know where he's heading next. Okay? I'll, um, on that, I'll uh, set out to find, find Zozo. Find Zozo. Mr.'s comment. So after you did that, like, I'm trying to teach, he turned around and went, that's how you teach. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's, I mean, that's how I imagine you actually teach. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, that, that is how, how I imagine teach. you actually teach. You're going, right, so I've got this. <laughs> how do I find this? That's oh, fuck it. That's a pretty good bumper. I was about to say, Carver's a prick. And you've equated to Josh. Carver's just his own guy. Favourite oh, MVC. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, um, Carver's got something to do just before we all meet up, but if I think I'm, I think I know what that is. Are you talking to your father? No. You want to talk to him at some point, no, don't you? Uh, as we leave. Yeah, no, yeah, we can do that as we leave. But I was just going to say, right. Carver wants to do a planning of a route before he goes to talk to Zozo, but... Okay. You want to do something now? Yeah, I want to see if, um... Fairbrook's got a few people, spare labourers wise. Uh, you can go and find him and speak to him if you like. Is that right? Yeah, you find him just back in his office. Desk full of papers, milling about, he's got some candy crush on the go. He's not in no, he's... Hey Fairbrook, look! <laughs> <laughs> I, I just see it as you've just got he's just giving you this awesome sword and you're like, by the way, I know you just gave me this cool sword, but So you go find him. He's in his office. He is already hard at work rebuilding the like plans to rebuild the island, rebuild trade routes. It's very hard for him. He just outwardly declared in support of a rebel outcast pirate nation, which then might impose on his ability to trade. But hey, if there's if there's one nation that's willing to have a sympathetic, sympathetic ear for the pirates, there might be more. Yeah, Yolo. Yolo. Just gonna like knock on his door. Like, yeah, just sort of knocking yeah. on his door. So he will sort of, as he looks up, sort of not gesture for you to come in, but sort of nod to say, "Yeah, you can, you can hang in." 
I go. Go for the fair bro. Captain Zozo, I see uh, you have found a home for your new blade. Yeah, I'm sure. In your heart. Sepulchral. <laughs> <laughs> <Sabuku. laughs> um, I have many people to thank um, for, for, for that, you, you being one of them. Um, I, I, without wishing to overstep my mark or any boundaries, I was wondering if you had any labourers, specifically painters or decorators. Um. He sort of yellow pages speaks for the minute, <laughs> um, flicks through a file of facts that he's got on his desk, and I know he died. Um, I can, I certain, I, we certainly have labourers, or more specifically painters, on the island. Um, what, what might you need them for? I just wish to borrow a handful to come with me to the ship. Um, yeah, um, not to be selfish, but uh, we need every hand on deck, so to speak, to rebuild this place. However, if you do not intend to leave the island with them, I'm sure that you head down into to, towards where the docks are, you will find um, who you are looking for. I have no intention with leaving with them. Um, I just wish to borrow their artistic skills to uh, bring to life my new vision of the new um, then certainly if you head down to the docks um, there is a gentleman down there who should be hard at work repurposing an Obsidian Federation fleet for our purposes uh, I believe you will find him talking to Captain Nauro uh, Thank you for your time Fairbrook uh, You uh, are welcome here any time friend Do you know we are here to help when you need us I fear that may be the case again at some point, but hey, we will face every battle that comes at the time. Thank you. You heading down to the docks? Yeah, you head down to the docks, and as you make your way back through the archway that you entered a few days ago in in secrecy, and I can't remember if you bought your way into the island originally, or you fought that guy at the front, but you do find a every one of the Obsidian Federation fleet that is in the docks with your new dawn being on the end, are being stripped and um, like repainted and repurposed. You find some of your own men helping, as Typhus has been uh, been down and instructed to do. And you do find a like a. You find Captain Narrow. He um, as he sees you approaching, he will give you a nod to say like good morning, but then move off to sort of uh, talk uh, to deal with the issues that he has to deal with. And you will find like a very tall, strapping sort of olive skinned man with slick back hair into a ponytail completely topless with the most luscious chest hair you have ever seen and like a big old pair of workman boots and some like a like a utility belt around his arm with a hammer and different tools going and as he sees you approach he will uh let out a, laugh, a little smile and head over and hold out his hand and say captain zozo i believe your uh, reputation for siege i will extend my arm Countering whichever arm yeah. suits, which one is quite out. Um, pleasure. I uh, don't have the luxury of knowing your name, sir. People, People just, just call me Dave. <laughs> Boatman Dave. Boatman Dave. Boatman From what you described, it's the man that I'm doing. What you described, I've got to get a compatible. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they just call me Dave. I can't remember my actual name, it's been that many years. Um, Boatman Dave. Just Dave will do. Dave. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've, I've just been speaking to a fair bit. Um, and I, I was looking to loan the, the time of some painters, decorators, artistic gentlemen, maybe such as yourselves, um, to help me bring to life the vision I have of how I believe our ship needs to change. What did you have in mind, sir? Um, did we ever go over how it actually looks? You I mean, it was just a ship. didn't, you've just got a ship. You can take this chance to 
explain if you wish. Oh my god, we have customization options. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you've not unlocked that one, sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's microtransaction, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, no, no, you have, have to complete 50, 50 races, races, but... Have you lost <laughs> new songs, though? <laughs> yeah. have, have you been, been around Port Monday looking for them? Leave her, John. Yeah. I envision my perfect ending to this campaign is we will fade out to credits as we were all singing that <laughs> in the last episode. Anyway, uh, what do you have in mind? So let's, let, let's say the New Dawn is a relatively normal ship. Yep. Yeah, it's nothing special. Um... The normal flag that flies for the new dawn is a white background flag with almost uh, the outline drawn in black of hills and a mountain region mm -hmm. with an orange sun right at the heart of it. So that's the normal flag. That's very cool. Um, but the ship just looks like a ship. Um, Zozo's going to ask if Big Dave. Big Dave, uh, would mind, mind being through what Zelda has been through, being on the little attunement journey he's been on. I think it's about to, and he feels that him and his crew have earned a bit of, not necessarily status, but it's time that we fully lean into who we are. Mm -hmm. And would like the boat to be decorated from bottom upwards, so the bottom's ascending, in different shades of blue. Starting at the dark colours at the bottom, yeah. yeah. Moving to lighter blue as it goes up. Just yeah, just a cascading, just like a yeah a gradient of blue. Uh, yeah. When you say to top sails, or just rail around deck. So all of the what I'm going to classify as like the bottom half, the bottom of the ship. Yeah. Uh, including what we walk across on the deck. Yeah. Um. All the posts. Uh. We will go with yellow. So all the final decals and things like that. So it's all across the ship. This very, like I say, fading from dark blues to mm -hmm. light blues all across with all the finer bits um, and masts and things like that all done in decorative yellow. Mm -hmm. He will listen intently, and you can see the whirring mind of a trade tradesman <laughs> whirring along as you speak as he is already every word you say you know, it's going yeah, to be 30 gold for that, and then you do that when are you looking to have this done um well i'm still waiting to reconvene with the rest of my crew so at the moment i'm in no rush so i reckon me and the boys could have this done in three four days Five, if Jeffrey's not pulling up to speed. <laughs> and uh, how much would this cost? I'll tell you what I'll say I'll do. I'm going to tell you that this, the going rate for my men <laughs> is 35 gold a day. Uh -huh. Now, given the grandeur of the job, I should be saying 50 given the fact that you've just saved our lives and liberated us from whatever that fucking bitch was <laughs> I'm going to call it 40 so I'm going to say to you 40 gold a day Yeah. you can uh, roll a d20 Yeah. and we will see how many days it will take him to complete this well, I was oh, it, won't be, it won't, won't be up to 20 days just to be clear there's going to be up roll to a d4 no it's going to be up to 5 <laughs> I, I like, was going to like, offer him more money to get it done quicker, if that helps. I like how he's grunting and sighing like I didn't just give them all a thousand gold each. That that was that was the point. I could offer some more to get it done quicker. Um, here we go. Have a D five. Hmm? I got D twenty. What a D twenty. It's an eighteen. Uh, so that's four days. So we'll get that done at four days. At forty gold each. At forty gold a day, and if you want to get it done quicker, at eighty gold a day. He can double up his man, cover as, twice as much yeah. ship in a day. Mm -hmm. can have it in two days, but it'll be twice as much. So the same price just this time. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> About one day. One day? One day. You want this done in 24 of our 
Caribbean hours. I mean, my clocks have started. That will cost you 400 gold, sir. The men I've got to hire to get that painted in the next 24 hours. I need Carol Smiley. I need Carol Smiley. What we need is Nick Knowles in this bad boy. The <laughs> <laughs> legendary painter. painter. I'll tell you what, for five grand, I'll do it in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> um, the day it is. The day it is. Mark that off, and he will get that done. That, the new dawn in a 24 hours will be painted into the colours you require. Now, after that, are we all heading <coughs> to meet to plan what is going to happen next? Mm -hmm. So you guys have been given sort of rooms in the fort. You've also been given access to not only the central wall room that you guys, or everybody met, but you've also got a little communal area. Imagine a a hotel suite that's got a communal area in the middle. You guys can meet in that sort of situation to discuss what's next, to discover what you guys have all found out and what the next steps are. Is this like... Because we was walking around at night and stuff, wasn't we? Like when me and Cole was having our conversation. Call it the next morning. You guys can sleep that night then if you want. Long rest if you're anyone that needs it. And then meet the next morning. We know what that oh, for a nice means. breakfast. Are you finally not exhausted? I'm finally not exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> it's only been four episodes. <laughs> At least. Uh, Carl will be up early to try to retrace his steps to find the room where his clothing is. Uh, when we did, Tony. Investigation check if you want to try and find it. I was going to say, Typhus would have gone with try and find them after our conversation. Yeah, no, you can give him the help action then. Yeah, I am. Um... I would have laughed if you just got rid of your exhaustion and we ended up straight back in combat. <laughs> Yet another exhaustion. It's two fours. <laughs> um, so that is investigation. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you can't. You it's that weird thing where you know you go no, I left it in that tower. I can't for the life of me figure out how to get into that tower. And for a good ten minute period, you walk the same route that Matrim was walking the night before when he was drunk. Do I burn a snail slot to fire there? <laughs> you could go and buy a t-shirt. It's my armor plate as well. You'll have to oh, that armor. Um, <laughs> I, I would have, hopefully, having known the fort a bit better, can I make an investigation check to try and yes, get... Yes, you can. <laughs> um, like, it's... Like, a look at the t a window, like, it's there. And then try to get around, and then go enter like Scooby Doo. Let you go and wander, and then Billy comes out. Yeah, that's only a twenty-three. Only a twenty-three. You were able to go. What room was it in, Cold? And then you go. So when he goes, up, yeah, North Tower, and you immediately take him to. You know, like there's like a corridor with seven or eight doors. It is that one door that you didn't go through. It takes you directly to a staircase that winds its way up all the inside. Definitely open that door. And you find your chest plate. On the side. There. So, right. So, shirt is it ruined? Is it ruined? Yeah. How did, did you rip it off? Did you take it off? Calmly? No, as in from the bird. No, it only hurt you. Uh, okay, you it's... felt because you didn't take any damage. It wasn't hot to touch. It was just you felt the pain of it being there. Okay, so there's no like second imprint on my breastplate. No. Then I shall. I would like get dressed. Vengeance. As before you get dressed, as you go to sort of. And they pull it on or put it on, and you see your this now scar on your chest with this word, and the things. Do me an investigation check. Not an, yeah, do me an investigation check or an insight. Eight. Yeah, he's, he's got a scar on his chest now. Well, cold getting ready. Is just going to be stood in the doorway and just have a quick look at that photo that he. Yeah, put should, on. should I tell Zozo? My plan is gold because we now, at this moment in time, as far as I'm aware, only have um, <laughs> have two headings. Okay. I'm going to look to see whether we can find a route to encompass both of them because, as important as following this um, map I don't know it's like nothing I've ever seen in that was in that in that cabinet in in the office something's happening to you and I 
would much rather find out what that is as well. And if we can do both, that's even better. Because this uh, holding up the um, spyglass has been hidden for a number of years. And we know who's coming after us for this. We don't know what's caused that. And I'd rather not have have a lot, even more people coming after us if we can help it. Because, to be honest, if it wasn't for this, hmm. I'd probably want to stay behind. Well, the kindest one of us all, Cold. Never, ever change. Okay. <laughs> Typhus will chuckle to himself as he follows Cold. Uh, do you still want to look at that picture? Uh, if you don't mind. It's up to you. If you want to look yeah, at it. Yeah, I'll have a look what Cold's putting his arm around. Yeah, roll like, uh... do an Arcana check for me. Of course. <laughs> That will be a um, 14. You look at this picture and you are convinced that last night for a split second you saw somebody else's face on this. Okay. Um, or your mother's face was wrong. But then you looked again, you sort of blinked or looked away, looked back and your mother's face was right. That's some real shit. What did I ask you? Arcana. Mm. What you can tell on a 14 is that something was either happening to this picture or this picture was trying, something was trying to show you something. Um, but on a 14, you're not able to sort of figure out what. You do get the sense, though, that it's something you already know. You know, like when you know the, you know, when you see an actor and you go, oh, he was in, and then you can't remember any film he was in. So you see it and you go, oh, yeah, because. No, I can't. I can't put my finger on it. I will. Um, knowing that, I can't remember his name now. The blood cleric. What was his name? Critchley. Critchley. Friar Critchley. Cr- Critchley is somewhat familiar with the arcane. Yeah. I will make a note to try and find him. Talk at, to him at some point. At some point after the council meeting, which I assume we're about to head to. Yep. And then, um, and then follow Cold down the stairs, or lead Cold down the stairs back to the uh, where we're meeting up. Okay. What chest plate? What is your armor that you wear? Your chest plate. Half plate. Half plate. Um, I don't know what check to make do. You put it back on. You start heading down. The, you're like, oh, thank God, I found my, found my armor. You start heading back with Typhus towards the thing, and as you get about. 20 or 30 steps you start to realise that it doesn't feel the same as it did before it doesn't you never really want to go oh I've got armour look at me I'm big and strong but it doesn't make you feel any more protected than you were before before you put it on two minutes ago do you do anything as you walk back to the typhus is this this is definitely my armour isn't it yeah of course it is no I've I've never seen anybody else have cropped um, half plate. You can do a perception check on cold if you like. Of course, then. I'm going to say with that being a four, uh, so a nine total. It just looks like cold. It's fashion sweetie. There's nothing really, really hard diff- like to notice about him. So you guys head back to meet the rest of the crew? Yeah, I will uh, we'll go. Immediately to find Zozo. Now, I have something to show you. <laughs> Zozo's like, wait, where's this going? <laughs> and then, look, you put it all back on just to take it off. You take it, you're taking the breastplate off. Well, they're like lifting it up. <laughs> you're not taking it off, taking it off. Yeah, sure, I'll take it off. Oh. So if you take it off and put it to the side in order to show Zozo, uh-huh. that sense of it not feeling the same, you don't feel any stronger with it. You suddenly feel a little bit more yourself, yourself. a little, a little bit, bit more confident, confident, a little, a little bit, bit more. more. You know when you're in a really good mood. You know when you've had a Barocca and it's you, but on a really good day. <laughs> Barocca, get, get me on the phone. Do you know what I mean? So you feel suddenly you feel really not powerful because you're not the type of person that 
puts a lot of stock in power. But you do feel a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more in control, let's say. Oh, that was weird. Anyway, look at my chest. I will be still behind Carl. This just happened last night. With no reasoning. Just, just searing hot pain. Typhus. Right. So, from what the description that Carl gave me, he felt burning effectively. Massive burning. And this then appeared last night on his chest. Um, I've checked the coordinates out underneath the uh, word vengeance, vengeance on it, and um, it's uh, Ember Fall? Ember's Throne. Ember's Throne, which is... My isle, home island. Yes. And having done a quick look at some maps, what is that in relation to our... To, um, so when you want to try and plot the course to both. Yes, to um, Mother's Cottage. That's somehow in the middle of an ocean. Um, okay, do me a... Have we done a map... Have we done a, a, a tribute a, a role to your map skills before? Um... I'd prefer it to be a wisdom than an intelligence one, but I'll... You can do wisdom if you'd like to do wisdom. Would it be a performance? Because his is a performance when he does cooking. So if yeah, but cooking, cooking is a performance. Speaking yeah. as a former yeah. chef, cooking, cooking is a performance. It's an art. <laughs> so, so, so mm, sextant. <laughs> yeah, we can cut straight wisdom. I was supposed to do that with advantage. Yeah, you can do with advantage. Your map stuff you tend to do with advantage, don't you? Yeah, so that's a natural 20 for a 22. So, so on a natural 20, 20. It's a map. <laughs> you know where Ember's Throne is. Yes. You now know because of the map that yeah. you got from your father's cabinet, you know where this random island is that yeah. Mother's Cottage appears to be on. And you're... What? No. You know when... They're, they're not on the way from each other, but because of your knowledge of things, you can go, well, hang on, if we cut across here, hit that heading, maybe stop off to refuel, like to restock somewhere, we could go via Ember's Throne to the Cottage. There is a, well, take you a little bit longer than go directly to um, Mother's Cottage, but there is a way that you can, it's like, you know when a taxi driver knows a route that no one ever else does? It's a bit like that. You go, right, no one else would ever think to go down this path and then around the island to get here. But by doing that, you're going to be able to hit both things on the way. So you are fairly confident you can get to both. So having pre-prepared that information, so to say this, going, this has happened for a reason to cold. We're not sure what. I would much prefer us to not have more people after us than we already do or if it's allies or friends I would much rather have them on our side sooner rather than later so as important again holding up the spyglass going important as this is I would much rather take a quick couple of day detour and find out what on earth is going on with that because no, uh, nothing according to Cole nothing was anywhere near him and nothing was nearby and if they can affect him from from all the way over there I want to know who just quickly right, how tall is Cole? what 5 11 6 it's about the same um, thank you as ever Typhus, we would be, as always, quite literally lost <laughs> if it wasn't for you. You are the glue, glue that holds this, this team together. together. Yeah, yeah, because the maps. <laughs> because the maps. The maps. The maps. Um, holding a hand out and placing it on Colm's shoulder. Really? <laughs> 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 uh, fully appreciate what Typhus is saying and I think ultimately called the decision rests with you we've found a way Typhus has found a way to 
manage our journey and incorporate going back home for you. Is this something you wish to pursue? As captain, 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 this is your decision. <laughs> I feel this dynamic cold go on for a long time. You are the kindest of us all, and you almost certainly think of yourself last. I ask you for once to put your feelings and your thoughts at the forefront of your actions and in the forefront of your mind. Well, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit curious. It is time. Yeah, it is time. Okay. Then, Typhus, please plot us the most efficient route. We'll be dealing with Cold's issue first. And then we'll be heading to this team. Just as a quick question, who here has been to Mother's Tea Room? Because obviously I have, I know Cole hasn't. Only and I haven't. Only me. Cole. She went off down the beach, if you remember. Yeah, yeah, but I've obviously was in there a few well. points. I mean, and Kyron in the room while this conversation happened. About to ask you all there. I was going to say, I was going to say, I didn't want to be there, I didn't want Kyron to so be there yet. I was wanting to find Zozo anyway. So. Right, okay. If it's, you've, you've already, already done, done one, one, you can do a perception check, check onto to Cole. Have you, sorry, sorry, have you, have you still, still got, got the top your chest plate off? I'll put it back on. You've put it back, back on. on. Do a perception, perception check onto Cole. 21. And the 21, similar to how Colt has sort of noticed the difference when he's got the chest plate on and off, as he puts the chest plate back on, out of the corner of your eye sort of just stood on a table behind him by about five feet, you see Dara... The light at Dara sort of admits naturally dims by about thirty percent, just becomes a bit thirty percent. And as you look at Cold himself, you see him a bit more slouched, a little bit more like weighed down a little bit, a little bit more not struggling. He's still a big guy, quite a strong guy, but just under the weight a little bit of this chest plate, you just notice that he seems to be a little bit more pulled down by the chest plate. Oh. Yeah, I got you. Um, can I ask a favour? Always. <laughs> you, you, you've been through a lot recently. I just to dredge up the recent events. They were quite traumatic. I'm, I'm going to ask if you'd mind um, doing what you normally do in tending the kitchen while we while we uh, perform the necessary maintenance and get ready to leave. Um, but my favour was, just take a step back for yourself, have a breath, take the armour off. It uh, seems to be weighing very heavy on your soul. Yeah, sure. Um, of course, yeah. Uh, take it off and... If you find somewhere to store it cold, I'm not saying get rid of it, um, just I think you need a break. On your 21 perception, when he takes it off, Cole, um, Dara's light comes back. She's grown brightly, happily. Not quite white, burning hot light, but there's a little... She, she's very bright and very confident. And as he takes it off, you notice Cold, without noticing himself, carries himself a little bit higher, a bit stronger, a little bit more... Not quite tensing, but a little bit more of an imposing figure when he's taking it off. Like when you've been hitting the gym too much. I've been in King King. Ooh. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> With it off, have you got anything else on? You're now bare chested. I've got my shirt. Can you still see? You got. With it off, you can also then do an insight check into the mark itself. That, I mean, you've seen it. It's not visible. 18. On an 18 insight check, as you look at this, you've never seen anything like it. But given the information about. Um, what you got on your perception check you know it's in the difference in cold and Dara when they have chest plate on and when he's not got the chest plate on you notice that when he takes the chest plate off not only does he hold himself a bit more it looks less like a burn and more like a almost like a tattoo it's still burnt into him but it's more healed it's more 
stronger, it's more powerful. It looks like a stronger mark as cold. He's now holding himself better without his armour on. Where are we currently in, re in, in relation Just to like, the ship? Uh, you're yeah. in the fort. The ship is down so the middle. Um, so we have our bearings decided. Cold. Um, take yourself and Dara to the ship. Um, there might be a uh, like maybe pleasant surprise in still, I'm not quite sure. Um, but get yourself sorted, make yourself back at home. Um, I'm going to round up the rest of the crew that are missing. Um, and we'll be back. Leave, leave, leave the armour here, I'll bring it back. I think, I think you need a rest, my friend. Uh, he starts to go off on uh, a uh, uh, job towards the ship to prepare. He goes, oh, uh, heads up. Uh, there might be an extra hand in the kitchen, and he keeps walking, running. Do you want to find Kyron? So yeah, so obviously I know that this kind of me mini meeting was happening, and after a while, I I was kind of waiting outside because I've been waiting to speak to Kyron. Um, and as I can tell, Kyron's not here yet. I've gone in search of Kyron, looking for him to find out his exact location. Mm hmm. I feel bad for Matron half this episode has been him looking <laughs> for people. So what um, do you want to do? Whereabouts, are, whereabouts would you be while like they were having like this kind of mini meeting? Like, I could hear. Well, I was trying to find not... Zozo. Anyway, so you're sort of on that. your way to yeah. where they were meeting. Yeah. Yeah. So I see Kyron down the corridor, and the... I'm sort of rushing as yeah. well. Like I'm not walking casually. I have got a bit of a pace to me. The fashionably late again, Kyron. I see. <laughs> and I go to put my arm out like that, in seeing how he reacts towards my kind of hand clasp. Do you take the arm or do you? I was sort of like mid stride it. I was sort of pause for a split second. You know, like a bit taken aback, like, okay. And just return. Return, return, yeah. return it. So like, but there'll be just that like brief pause where you're a bit like oh, that's you've never wanted to open. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's a have. bit like Frodo and Legolas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So like, cl clasp arms, bring him in, kind of pat on the back, and I'm like, I need to speak to you, Kyron. Okay. So we, me, you, and Zozo spoke many a moon ago mm -hmm. after Literally the week. <laughs> incident regarding Luther. Mm -hmm. I don't actually do that. Um, I've got it on camera. You definitely did. <laughs> <laughs> um. We had our conversation, and since then, I've gone through many emotion that I haven't felt before. Mm, and funny. the fight the other night, I was disadvantaged. And last night, I drank, me and Cold went off, drank, and we had a talk, but he just seemed to oh. disappear at some point. And I know I've said something to him and I need to speak to you as well because I remember the point that I needed to speak to him was you questioned my thing for this brotherhood. You questioned who I was as a person and the phrase of I would walk through fire or through the oceans comes to mind right now to me and I don't know why. And you questioned the fact that I saw myself above and I am above, but these are all my brothers because there is always that bigger brother. And if you ever need my help, or if Typhus, as we have seen, needed our help, I would always be there for my brothers to help. But do not question my role. Do not question how I act because this is how I act because someone needs to help lead these men and guide them and be the hand to help them get to their destination I'll just sort of be <clears throat> I won't have any sort of like facial expression I'll be quite passive and just taking it in you know Perfect. <laughs> just <laughs> dead behind the eyes <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna uh, Karen's gonna sort of say to him now yes I know we've had our uh, differences and in a way, I have, over time, noticed you have, uh, your character has changed to a degree. Still probably not as 
far along as it could be, but you are going in the right direction that I might even tell you that, you know, you are a decent person, that you're not just acting on your own self-interests. And um, I also realise I never got the opportunity to thank you for helping me out in our uh, fight with uh, Lady Fairbrook. That's a... Uh, Bastard with the bullets caught me off guard a bit. But um, thanks to you and your uh, unicorn, you uh, got me out of that scrape, thankfully. So I do appreciate it. But the way I can see our journey going, we need to set aside all these little rivalries or... What would what, you call it? Uh, rifts. No matter how small, we need to be done with them now, because I have a feeling we're heading towards more something more than any of us have ever dealt with before, and we're going to need each other's backs. I 100% agree, and that's why I needed to speak to you, because I spoke to Cole, and in that fight, there was a voice in the back, and it affected how I could perform, so... You going down could have been because I wasn't in the full frame of mind. You not may agree with my methods. I had that as well. Though. <laughs> you may not agree with my methods, but we have the same goal, and I share that brotherly sight that you have. And I agree that the rifts need to stop, and that's why I needed to speak to you because I need to be at the best. You need to be at the best so that we can all be at the best for each brother in the, on the ship. Well, trust me when I say, as far as I'm concerned, I will be giving you the benefit of the doubt. I won't be judging or second guessing unless you give me very good reason to. Going forward, we're on good terms. So I'll go to put my arm back out, clasp it in, and then go, and if you need anything, Come see me, and I'll always help. And the same then, goes to you. That's and then I'll follow with Kyron into the room to go speak to Zozo because obviously I was meant to be in the meeting. Yeah. As it ends, me and Titus move away from the door where we're literally going, oh, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a glass. <laughs> Titus so, so just su suddenly there with a book upside down. <laughs> so I think the just situation smart, as right? I'm, I see it now, you are all in the same room. I know Cold mm -hmm. is about to leave to go to the ship. Mm -hmm. Um, but for the first time properly since that night you had the big battle and the big meeting you are now all in the same room mm -hmm. I know that Typhus wishes to speak to his father before you depart the port I know you would like to speak to Zozo is that a pressing matter you wish to bring up so you no can, it's to update so you him could, on. yeah you could speak to them yeah. him on ship on the way at a later date so is there anything you guys need to do as a group around the table as characters around the table together now Short, short of explaining, yeah. briefly going over, yeah. over as saying, because I haven't actually explained to anybody what I actually saw mm -hmm. in the, um, other, other than saying we need to go see Mother. Yeah. So I explain, I'll give the, these guys a brief, because I felt it was inappropriate to do during the yeah. main council meeting, a briefing of what I saw, as well as um, with these two, a lot of the, uh, a much, a bridge version of what happened to Cold basically yes. saying somehow a mark has appeared on Cold's chest it has these coordinates which is to um, Ember's throne um, unless pointing towards all three we have no objections of going there prior to um, going to see Mother just and reiterate my point of going I would rather not have more enemies chasing us Deal with this before cool. we move on to the bigger thing. Yeah, yeah. So as yeah, go. well, we don't want. Uh, I'll yeah. just sort of put in like we don't want to be uh, uh, facing multiple fronts, kind of thing. You know, split attentions. Very, very sensible. Cold. That was a great drinking session last night. Ha <laughs> ha. Another ship. I thought you were still in the room. No, is there a delay? Zozo told him to. So. Yeah. Golden, so we have nothing else to do between around the ship. table. But I think, I think bar <laughs> everyone's sort of catching up. Mm. Typhus has done his bit. Zozo, will, you know, is going to infill these two. Going off what we know, 
we're going to go to uh, uh, the, the, the question was posed to Cold um, as deemed that it should be we're going to his homeland first to deal with this issue time for this court with a way to make it to, to make it more negotiable to do both mm-hmm. um, just before anything else to sort of just to tie off that loose end of Cold's armour Zozo is going to say to tie first to take the armour <laughs> and are you doing your bits with the maps and whatever you do a great job Take it off with you somewhere, study it, have a look at it, get match me to smash it a few times, see if anything happens. It, it's yours to have a play with because I'm not sure. It, there's something off with it. Well, I'm assuming Zozo would have mentioned what he noticed. Retroactively, would have I have noticed it? What, when he noticed the change in the if he If he so. said to me, Oh, did you notice that? Well, that He's informed you that that's what he saw when, say, the, when the armour was off. There's something not right with it. Yeah. You know, it. it, 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 it when Cold was wearing it, he was certainly off. That's the best um, way to put it, yeah. And, and that applied equally to Darva. Uh, take it away, study it, do what you need to do, get oh. Matrim to hit it, throw it overboard, no, see if it rusts, do whatever. You can do whatever, you can You can inspect the armour now if you wish, if you want to wait to do it while you're at sea, so you can... What we're looking at doing is do getting rid of the, there's lots yeah. of variables and we want to close down all the different ones. Yeah, yeah no, I was going to do something else, but I realised no, it wouldn't work, so that's fine. It's okay, yeah, no problem. So... That's not the style that I'm clicked on. <laughs> so with you guys done there, you head back to the ship, you're getting ready to depart. I believe it is the next morning, so towards some sort of later in the afternoon your ship will be finished painted, you will be ready to go. You will have a fully equipped ship with shot and uh, provisions and rum and south gate that you've managed to pilfer from the other ships. You've also, at Typhus's request, made sure that there is enough provisions and um, supplies left at the fort. As you guys head down there, Typhus, you head towards your father's study and find him in a very similar position to what um, Zozo found him, studying maps, studying ledgers, and not like a full budget, but where, like a record of their finances, what what needs rebuilding, what needs done, what areas of the fort need best attention. And as he sort of sees you walking towards that, he will sort of set down his quill, like... Um, look lovingly at his son and say ah I thought you might be coming to see me before you left well it's a tradition at this point well yeah at least this time you're leaving under more um let's say safe conditions wow. <laughs> what you did out there was amazing thank you you coming back was more than I ever visioned I was worried for it I, selfishly didn't want you to ever come back for your sake but I was wrong coming back was always the best thing you could have done part of me never wanted to come back I never wanted to see her again but if I had known what horrors befell this place because of my actions I probably would have stupidly been back sooner and would have been in her clutches so by whatever powers may be, the stars aligned and I was back at the right time. At the right time. I'm just you sorry say. that I'm just sorry the costs that had. Some costs need to be paid, son. He sort of giggles at the word son. He sort of chuckles to himself. I owe you an apology. I should have been honest with you the minute I thought you would be able to understand, which was years before yesterday. It doesn't take a genius, it doesn't take someone like yourself to point out that and he pauses, sort of lump in his throat. A bit like yourself earlier when you weren't quite weeping but you were definitely moved. And quietly, he will say, it doesn't, doesn't take a genius to realise you're not my son, nor are you your mother's son, however counterintuitive that sentence sounds. Um, I'm not. I was just going to say that if anything, I hope that when you were removed from Rockcliffe Bay the first time as an infant, maybe we were able to offer you some modicum of a better life, which has led you to be the person you are. 
Look, the person who taught me how to be a man, as far as I'm concerned, you're my father. At that, he starts, like, tears forming and rises. It streaks down. I... Well, going for a hug. I'm assuming he stood in front of his desk at this point. Yeah, he's walked around to speak to you. Um, while doing that, and hoping he's in a somewhat state of distraction, I'm going to try and take the bundle of letters that I had that I never sent to him. Yeah. Detailing all my adventures and whatnot, and put it on his desk. Um, Can you do me a slight hand check? Of course, okay. That is a 19. I haven't got his uh, sheet. But on a natural 7, he's not going to have a plus 12 to perception, is he? Um, yeah, you successfully managed to put them on his desk um, without him noticing. Um, he was sort of leaning back from the hood. Sort of, you know how guys tend to do when they've had an emotion and sort of bat his eyes down and go, right. It's a nice desk. It's in this place. Reconstruction, I understand. Yeah. Um, I uh, probably doesn't need saying, but it seems cruel to be away from you again so quickly, but I'm in no position where I can accompany you, nor am I ever going to ask you to stay in this instance. I hope one day that you will come back and follow this place home again, but I'm aware, any sort of motions to the, the spyglass on your hip, that destiny is a bigger calling than seeing your old man. But, um, maybe a little something to make up for not being there when I needed to be. And he will sort of reach around his desk, somehow not seeing the pile of letters you've just put there, uh, and take a sort of like velvet box out of his desk and hand it over to you. I will open it up and do it. You open it, and in a crimson sort of box on sort of crimson, like a velvet like cushion in the middle, is a shadow fell shard. And say, shadow fell shard. And say, um, maybe you could put this to better use than I could. I will take the crystal that's um, in the central part of yeah. my thing. I will pop it out mm -hmm. and go, keep this safe for me. And hand it as a, mem as a sort, of, uh, sort of like a trade. Yeah. And then plop that in place. Into, into the thing. He will take your crystal and then on his desk he has like, like a stand that's got like a little dagger on, like a letter opener, and he will just pick it up and ping it into a wall and it's like as you see it sort of pings into the wall you will look up and see the portrait of your mother that Matthew tried to hit yesterday or the day before and it pings straight into the forehead and you will place the crystal that you had on, on that stand that he had in private place on his desk in front of him he will sort of compose himself again um, are you guys leaving now? Uh, in a couple of hours well, I think we've just got the last few Preparation oh, and I, I do. I'd like to see um, Critchley. Critchley just before, he, if, if, you, if you know where it is. Yeah, he. Um, yeah, certainly. Um, let me show you. Yeah. And he will lead you down out of his um, out of his study. We'll go down like a spiral staircase yeah. or two, and in a it's not quite a dungeon, sorcerer's dungeon, because there's quite a lot of light coming yeah. in. But it is like the lowest point of the castle. That's not sorry, not quite at like where the yeah. where your mother's tied up still. Yeah. Well, if she survived the night. Um, but in like a, he's got like a underground sort of layer yeah. bit where he is in there, uh, and he will big smile as he sees you approach and walk over and without even stopping to talk, bring you in for a big embrace and a hug and like perfect, perfect boy, back at the right time. I told him it would happen, mm. and your father will just sort of give you a nod and head out and leave you with Richard. I will turn to him going, "This is not a goodbye. This is a see you later." Certainly. And he will sort of take go to say something, but then stop and then leave out. Yeah. Head. Critchley, yes. Could you? I'm. I'm reasonably familiar with the arcane. Yes. But I am smart enough to know that I do not know everything. Would you mind just having a quick look at some things, see if you recognise them? Yeah. So I will 
first um, pull out because um, I'm carrying cold time I'm going mm-hmm. is there anything that seems off about this to you he will sort of take it put it on his table in front of him not a, not just looking at it yeah. what's and I'm, you're filling him filling yeah. him sort of Telling him everything, or just it's uh, making him look a bit weak, sort of thing. Uh, giving him the keynotes, nothing yeah. like in detail. In detail, no, saying that Cole got this weird mark, but not saying anything about corners so and will, all that. So he'll sort of put his hand on it, mutter yeah. some incantations under his breath as he casts a spell, and then just sort of go. Uh, as far as I can tell, it's it's half plate armor. There doesn't okay. seem to be anything special or derogatory about it. Okay, and then I'll go, and then I'll um, go. Oh, and there's this, and then pull out the picture. Going, I have a strange feeling something odd was happening with this. Anything? He will pick it up, take take it from you, if you mm. mind. Take it from you and have a look, and sort of, again, as he's sort of looking at it, flips it over, flips it around, looks at it from different angles, upside down, always muttering under his yeah. breath, the, the incantation, going over and over and over to himself, and goes... Hands it back, yeah. staring off into the middle distance. That incantation's still going. And then he sort of... Um, ask Mother. Okay. Can you do me a perception check while you're in it, please? Of course, come. Nope. What? Uh, well, we'll say it's a six that I've got, but I have a plus five. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you don't notice anything in particular about this room. Uh, so, yeah, anything else I'm going to do for you? Um, look after him. He. I know he. I know he's very hard to. He, he's a hard man to kill, but I feel feel a lot more comfortable with the fact that you're with him. Um, he pauses and smiles and sort of looks off into the distance a little bit, and then flicks back and goes. Up until two nights ago, I thought he was the best of us. And then his son returned. I'll look after him. Don't worry. I've got this. And then he will sort of give you a nod and turn back to what he was working on before you entered. And you head into the ship with everybody else. I will go join the rest of my crew. So you head to the ship with everybody else. You set the, the first head bearing you need to head out yes. to sea. Is there anything else people want to do before you head out to sea? Uh, well, who okay. goes after you? Uh, Cole is going to already set up in the kitchen, mm-hmm. ready to go. He's going to look at Dara and go, right, let's make the best food anyone here has ever had. He's going to summon his sword. And it's just. And then he's going to take a massive swipe down in like an empty space in the kitchen. And there's like fiery uh, slit appears. And out of that slit, uh, comes out a uh, basically a what six and a half foot bipedal Dara, just but pure fire this time. I'm like, all right, let's get cooking. And I've summoned fire elemental, and that's going to help me in the kitchen from now on. <laughs> um, as you draw your weapon uh-huh. and you sort of go to cast a spell. Do me a perception check. And you can still carry on and do the spell. It's not going to affect that. But in that moment, before you make the big slash. twenty. <laughs> for... Oh, for a nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> I will honour a natural twenty. No, we might be called no crits given, but they are definitely given. You draw your sword. In, <laughs> you've not got your armour on. So when you get back to your room, you're already feeling a little bit. Good. You're feeling confident, you're feeling good, you're feeling comfortable. You draw your sword, and in that moment, just before you cast a spell and summon what I pictured as Cinderquill, I don't know if anyone else did, <laughs> <laughs> like a giant Cinderquill, um, I dig it. You realise, just before you're about to sign me down, this is the most powerful, the most comfortable, and the most at ease you have ever felt in your own body. You feel nigh indestructible in this moment. And then you cast your spell and you summon your fire elemental. Um, I'm going to tell you, Lloyd, on a, nat- oh, on a natural 20, 
perception after we have had everyone we can think of look at the mark on your chest. When you are not wearing armour, uh -huh. your base AC will be 19. Nice! As it's not quite a barrier tattoo, it's my take on one. Um, and as you stand there next to your fire fire elemental sous chef, you have <laughs> <laughs> Big Dara, Little Dara, welcome to our kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> we will end our episode there as you guys Yay. head out to sea big thank you to you guys at home for joint tuning in for episode 13 big thank you to you guys big for thank make... you to you oh, man. Man. Oh, man. You do. Oh. we'll be back in a couple of weeks to find out what happens initially on the way to Ember's oh. Throne but also what might be happening at Cold's home but until then I've been Ben these guys have been no Chris Gibbon and I'll see you next time See I think Josh. I'd already said to you, I'd already given you a big goodbye.